What is going on guys? It is Power Bang. Welcome to another Clash of Clans video and in today's video we're going to be looking at the Town Hall 11 game and what I feel are three of the best strategies to be picking up three stars against your fellow Town Hall 11s. All right, guys, so let's get straight into it. There are three strategies that I feel stand above the rest at the Town Hall 11 game. One of them is relatively new to the scene. Two of them you guys should already know about, but we're going to cover those in order today. So we had a war that went down a few days ago against Red Onslaught. Congrats to them. You guys put up a good fight. WHF got the victory on the strength of four Town Hall 11 three stars, and luckily all four of those three stars fell into one of the top three strategies I feel should be used at Town Hall 11 to secure three stars. So let's start out uh, without further ado at the number three slot. Let's look at Bowlers and Witches. The name joke continues. We are going to look at number five here. This is One Dom Blonde. Thank you to One Dom Blonde, to Mr. November, and to Nick for the content here. You guys are absolutely killing it. Notice the, uh, the army composition, guys. I'll pause it just for a moment. Uh, One Dom Blonde actually uses two miners here to come up with a mortar kill on both of the corners. Uh, the goal being on these square types of bases, you want to be able to break off that funnel so ultimately your troops go to the core. So bowlers and witches will come down and the goal is to jump them through the core of the base and then ultimately just have the continued spawn of the witches and her skeletons power through the base and the heroes are going to provide the pounding for the most part. So here we go. Uh, we've got the miners coming in on the corners here on both sides. So you see the mortars going down. Great use of the miners rather than a balloon because you can see this is covered by, you know, an air defense or even a hog rider. Uh, just doesn't quite have the uh, the strength, I don't believe, as a, as a miner and the, the pathing can get a little bit weird. So, nice job on that. Now you're going to see three golems come down, followed up by the uh, bowlers and witches on the corners. You want to take out these flanking buildings first and leave up the ones closest to your point of entry. So in addition to these troops, she's going to bring in the heroes. So you've got a Grand Warden on ground mode. That is important. It's going to stay with your ground troops. All of the traps should be triggered in advance uh, by those ground troops. So you've got bowlers, witches, heroes, early Grand Warden ability uh, in order to protect those things from the CC troops as well as the incoming Inferno fire. So a second jump spell goes down and a third one to get them out of the core. So three jump spells used as part of this composition. However, that can be tweaked based off of the enemy base. But the key is, is you want to have enough access for those troops to go all the way through the base to the, the last compartment. You can see here uh, the king and the queen uh, able to get to the uh, very last compartment, but they are about to pa uh, expire here. The queen hops the wall and is being shot now by the final few defenses. So... Uh, it looks like the skeletons actually are still tanking for us, so that is absolutely perfect. That's really one of the big keys of this strategy. As you can see the bowlers and the skeletons buying extra time. You can see the queen still uh, surviving in there, so really, really good stuff. And now he's got bowlers and witches along with the Grand Warden still alive in mass to go around the outside of this to, uh, to you know, really kind of seal the deal on the, uh, the base here. So one Don Blonde, beautiful job on the attack. We'll fast forward it just a little bit going through this one, but, you know, it's not dominant. That's why I have it in the number three spot, and it's also dependent on a little bit of luck, but with proper planning, good funneling, excellent jump spells, uh, you can take your max level heroes and max troops and really power through and punish a maxed out base. So that is our first Town Hall 11 attack strategy that I would recommend to get three stars. Next up, we're going to look at the number two strategy. That one is going to be relatively new on the scene, and I've got to give a massive shout out to Itsu and the Dark Looters. I'm going to put their uh, video or their YouTube channel link in the description below. Uh, definitely wouldn't have come up with this, I don't think, on our own if it weren't for the guys in Dark Looters kind of publicizing this on the live stream. And that is the Dragloon with the clone spell. So everybody's been trying the drag loon, uh, but the clone spell addition to it just makes it super, super strong. So we saw this for two stars um, on, or excuse me, we saw this for three stars on dips, you know, reliable dips with the uh, Town Hall 11s coming down to hit 10s, but what about 11s hitting 11s with the same exact strategy? Will it work? So you're going to see right off the bat a line of balloons and also a line of dragons essentially behind them coming at the air defense section of the base 
really aggressively. Rage spells all the way through and check out the clone in the middle there. Boom, cloned the uh, balloons to get closer to the core and as you can see they're going to go in, take out the infernos and then work their way into the backside of this base. So really, really strong stuff here. You can see the Grand Warden keeping all of those dragons inside of its Grand or its uh, Aura, the Life Aura ability. So many dragons left up, guys. King and Queen go on the outside of the base to keep those dragons kind of towards the core and doing work. And as you can see, he's got a couple of dragons in the core finally about to go down, but ultimately just too much firepower here. Only... Uh, really a couple of buildings left to threaten those dragons. They are getting a little bit low, but as uh, as the queen is helping out here, uh, it is looking really good for Nick. He's able to get this thing taken care of, no problem. The other variation of this strategy, and I highly recommend you guys go check out the live stream uh, with the replays on there of cloning dragons. That's the other way to do this. Instead of cloning the balloons in the core, you can actually clone the dragons as well. And with the max clone spell, you get two dragons out of it. And uh, that is actually super, super strong. So Nick here crushing this base with the drag loon. You can see he's got a, a lava hound and a balloon in the CC. He uses that lava hound for some initial tanking as the uh, the balloons are getting in to take out those first few air defenses. So that's what buys him just that split second of time that he needs to close the gap on the air defenses, get those balloons in there, get the dragons in there untouched, and really start the momentum burning down the base. So that is number two. So where does that leave us for the number one strategy at Town Hall 11 right now? We well, guys got any guesses? I know what it is. If we've seen it a hundred times, guys, we are looking at the La Loon. Very simple. And in this case, I'm going to add a clone spell to it as the number one strategy right now for obtaining three stars at the Town Hall 11 level. Seen this over and over again, uh, both against and, uh, you know, obviously um, for us. So the Town Hall 11 Laloon strategy with the clone spell. Let's get into that right now. First off, we're going to take a look at number six here. This is Mr. November, who also has a Mr. December and a Mr. October. This is Mr. October. So, interesting name theme, my friend. He uses wall breakers to get on in there. Here come the heroes. The goal here is to get the queen in and take out, look at this, a free air defense, essentially. Uh, he gets the archer tower on the way in, buys some time with that king, and there you go. So now the king is actually doing some tanking for the queen, which is ideal. Queen's going to reach over the wall. She's trying to get the air defense and the inferno. Goal being is you're spending as little as possible on the kill squad, really kind of a suicide hero entry, and getting as much value as you possibly can. Getting an Inferno and an air defense here while breaking off a defensive rank funnel is incredibly valuable. So you can see he starts off on the side where that, uh, that ring is broken. All of those balloons are going to head in, and he decides he's going to use a very early clone spell to force these balloons into the core. And the cool thing about the early clone spell is the pathing of those uh, those cloned balloons, they take the lead, and they're the actual ones that are taking the brunt of the damage for any balloons that are not being covered by a tank. And as they're taking that damage, that is a great thing for the balloons that are not necessarily clones. You can see up top, they are pretty much smashing through the rest of this base. Uh, the reason it's so great is those cloned balloons, especially if cloned early, they have a ex they have an expiration date on their lifespan. So they are dead men walking, essentially, or rather dead skeletons flying, and uh, they are going to die anyway, so if they're going to be the ones to take the brunt of the damage, that's actually a really good thing. So Mr. October makes it around the ring, six haste spells being used as part of this army composition, one rage in the CC, and you've got the clone spell obviously as part of your camp. So in addition to that, uh, we've got just basically a few hounds, a whole ton of balloons. Looks like they're rocking about 30 in this composition. We will see this attack one more time from this war. So Mr. October getting it done, and that is a few balloons to spare. I would say that he is uh, he has done crush the base. So nice work to him. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more raid from this exact same uh, style of raiding. And we'll see how Nick does it a little bit differently. So here on this base, we've got a clone spell. We've got a poison. We've got six haste and a rage. Same exact thing as before. We've got a lava hound in the CC and two lava hounds in the army cams. In addition to 30 
<laughs> 30 balloons. Uh, he drops a few of those at the start with one of the hastes, and the goal is to break off again the defensive ring uh, so that he has definite pathing with those balloons around the base. So now he knows he can start up here um, on these buildings up at the top right, and they're not going to path around the circle. He's not going to lose any uh, to this bottom section. So first, he's going to use the poison spell to take out the CC troops. Uses a baby dragon to help out as well there, so that was actually a really, really good CC kill. Very efficient. Nick is now on to uh, getting the king and queen down, and their goal is to hopefully uh, break off a little bit more of this ring and get one of the funneling, uh, get one of the uh, air defenses down here as well. So he breaks in, uses the ability, and now you're going to see the enemy CC come out. He's got a balloon in there. So the queen is about to lock onto that here in just a moment. She has to use her ability to clear out the expo. And now it's time to get the air defense. So perfect job on the entry. He's gotten the air defense taken care of. So there's only three air defenses remaining. And now she heads down getting a wizard tower as well. So really, really high value on the entry. Suicide hero entry, but two wizard towers, the air defense, as well as uh, a good chunk of the base taken out. And now you can see uh, he's got a really definite path here straight into the inferno tower. And watch again as he's going to get the haste spell down and clone the first group of balloons. And look where they spawn. They are the ones taking the damage right over the top of that inferno tower he actually kills the queen with them as well so an incredibly valuable uh group of balloons there really nice job on the entry and then haste spells all around the rotational deployment he's hasting in all of those loons and forcing the first group through the core where he's got that grand warden using the ability to keep them pretty much invulnerable to all other attacks on them so here goes the final couple of hounds into the last air defense things looking really good here for nick so many balloons left over and he still has a hound up left tanking so that's how strong this thing is nick using what i feel is the top attack right now at town hall 11 uh an air-based attack laloon uh using that clone spell very very strong stuff it's just a matter of cleanup now he's gonna get it done nick cruising around with those balloons he's going to clean it up with no issues at all plenty of time to spare tons of pups and minions absolutely loved it man so that is going to do it for your top three town hall 11 attacks to get three stars hopefully you guys learned something from this video uh, maybe you guys can practice up with one of these strategies if there are any that you use in your armies to get those three stars let me know what they are in the comments that is going to do it though for this episode guys this is power bang if you like the video you know what to do. Hit the like button. And if you're new here to the channel, feel free to drop the sub. I will see you guys in future Clash of Clans videos. That's going to do it for today. I will see you guys in the next one.